what you are doing with us and through us. We thank you for what our eyes are seeing and for what our ears are hearing. We also appreciate you for what we are partakers of, partakers of the blessings of God, the miracle working power of the Lord. We have read about many things, signs and wonders, but now we are beneficiaries of the signs and wonders. And so, Father, we pray that you will bless us indeed. And let these blessings be permanent with us, in us, and through us in Jesus' name. Father, you are looking for men as vessels that can be used to take the gospel of Christ from coast to coast, from nation to nation, from continent to continent. Father, use us all in Jesus' name. And for us, any problem in our lives, in our body, in our family, Lord, destroy them completely in Jesus' name. Bless the ministers and bless the members. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Very quickly, I'll be talking this morning on the subject of breaking yokes through fasting and prayers. Breaking yokes. Not just one yoke, but yokes. Irrespective of the number of the yokes. Irrespective of how long they have been there. Breaking yokes through fasting and the prayers. I look at Second Chronicles chapter 20. And we're going to look at a few verses there. Let's take a look at verses 1 through to 3. Second Chronicles chapter 20 verse 1. And then I'm going to read verses 20 to 22. And then verses 25 to 29. Because of time, I have to just speak some cogent verses of the scripture from there instead of reading the whole thing. If you are there, Second Chronicles chapter 20, just say amen. Very good, verse 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with them all that beside the Ammonites came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against them from beyond the sea on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hasezon Toma, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Pay attention. It doesn't matter the conglomeration of the forces and the powers of darkness coming against you. The power of God will destroy them all in Jesus' name. Verse 20. After Jehoshaphat called for fasting and for prayer. And then God, according to his nature, the nature of delivering his people, the nature of setting free, the nature of liberating his own people. And they rose early in the morning. Verse 20. Verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. And in an amen. amen. Believe his prophets, so shall ye prosper. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord and the, that should praise the beauty of holiness. Pay attention to that. They praised the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, Praise the Lord for his mercy endure forever. And when they began to sing and to praise the Lord uh, and to praise, the Lord sent ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mansiah, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Every force is rising up against you shall be smitten. Every attack of the enemy concerning you shall be destroyed. Everything the enemy is putting together shall be shattered in Jesus' name. And the miracle took place like your miracle will take place. Their deliverance took place, like your deliverance will take place. 
their liberation took place like your liberation will be taking place in Jesus name because of the power of prayer and fasting and now verse 25 and when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them the spoil of them you will get the spoil of your enemy they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away and they were three days in gathering of this spoil. it was so much somebody's blessing this month to be so much somebody's miracle this month will be so much and on the fourth day they assembled themselves in the valley of Beraka, for there they blessed the Lord. Therefore, the name of the same place was called the Valley of Beraka unto this day. Then they returned every man of Judah and Jerusalem and Washington and New York and Pennsylvania and Delaware, every man of Maryland and of North Carolina, and of South Carolina, and of Georgia, and of Alabama, and of Florida, and of Louisiana, and of Tennessee, and of uh, Arkansas, and of Mississippi, and of Texas, and of Chicago, Illinois, and of everywhere, everyone, we are returning with our spoil. And with all our pastors, because it says, and Jehoshaphat. And with all our pastors, I need a good one. Yeah. And with all our leaders, yeah. and with all our members, yeah. and with all our spouses, yeah. and with all our children, yeah. we are coming back rejoicing. Yeah. We are coming back with testimony yeah. in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And Jehoshaphat in the forefront of them to go again to Jerusalem with joy, with joy. This is your year of joy. For the Lord had made them to rejoice over their enemy. And they came to Jerusalem with subtries and harps and trumpets unto the house of the Lord. And the fear of God was on all the kingdoms of those countries when they, had, when they had heard that the Lord fought against the enemies of Israel. When the enemies of your soul will hear of what the Lord has done in your life, what the Lord is doing in your life, they become afraid of you. They will never be able to come near you anymore in Jesus' name. That is what fasting and prayer can do. Jeremiah 32 verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing. I need somebody to say that for me. There is nothing too hard for thee. Mark that word, nothing. And then look at your sickness. And look at your affliction. And look at your trauma. And look at your delay. And look at your infirmity. And look at your enemy. And look at the mountain before you. And the Bible says, nothing is too hard for God. Everything God will take care of in your life. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 27. Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is anything too hard for me? Look at it. Anything. Anything you will deserve from the Lord, he will do for you in Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 18 verse 14. Is anything too hard for thee, Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee. According to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. I rejoice with all our expecting mothers in the house. Are you rejoicing with them too? All our women that are waiting for the, for the blessing of the fruit of the womb. The word of the Lord is coming, you will be visited. 
in the name of Jesus. Psalm 107 verse 6. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, like you are going to cry unto the Lord. Like you are going to pray unto the Lord. Like you are going to seek the face of the Lord. And they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. And he did what? He did what? He delivered them out of their distresses. You are the next on the line. In the name of Jesus. We are looking at three points. Number one, vassality. The vassality of bondage and yokes in human life. The vassality of bondage and yokes in human life. Point number two, verifiable power of prayer and fasting that breaks every yoke. Verifiable, something you can verify. Verifiable power of prayer and fasting that breaks every yoke. And finally, victory through partnership with God for breaking all yokes. Victory through partnership. Because Jesus said, without me, you can do nothing. We are going to partner with him. He said, behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And that God is going to walk with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Versality. When I use the word versality, we're talking about the ability to adapt or to be adapted to many different functions or activities. What then am I saying? Versality. The different ways, forms, that the different ways and forms by which the enemy, the devil, attacks humanity. Some people, it is in their area of marriage. Some, it is in, on their job. Some, it is in their career. Some, it is in their health. Different people having challenges in different ways, whatsoever the attack of the enemy, the blessings of the Lord are coming your way in Jesus' name. So then understand that yoke is a burden, a heavy load that represses or restrains someone's freedom, someone's movement, someone's good health, someone's promotion, your peace, your joy, even your progress are targeted by yokes of the enemy. But the Lord will break them all. Yokes can be spiritual and yokes can be physical. And it can be a combination of both physical and spiritual. But whichever one, we have the master of the storm, the wind, and the sea here with us. He will walk with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at different ways that yokes and bounds works in the lives of people. Romans chapter 7, from verse 15. Romans chapter 7, from verse 15. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I will, that I do not. But what I hate, that do I. I then, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the Lord that it is good. Now, then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. So we see the yoke of sin, the bondage of sin, the Lord will deliver from it in Jesus' name. Verse 25 says, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so then, with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. God will make ways for you in Jesus' name. Lamentation, chapter 1, verse 14. The book of Lamentation, chapter 1, verse 14. The yoke of my transgression is bound by his hand. They are wrenched and come up upon my neck. He hath made my strength to fall. The Lord hath delivered me into their hand, from whom I am not able to rise up. So we see, when there is sin or transgression in the life of a man, it holds down, it restrains, it hinders, it limits you, 
deprives you of the best that God has gotten in stock for you. And then we see the yoke of servitude, slavery. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore, shall thou serve thy enemy. You will not serve your enemy. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Everything you read in that place is meant for your enemy. None of them will happen to you in Jesus' name. But then when there is sin in the life of a man, God does it by himself. By himself. There are people that no matter what they do, they are hungry day in, day out. They are thirsty day in, day out. They are naked day in, day out. They are homeless day in, day out. Because the hand of the Lord is against them. Or peradventure the hand of the enemy. If you are born again, you can disconnect, you can destroy, and totally remove the hand of the enemy from your life. And then we see the yoke of social vices. All kinds of immoral things happening on around. Second Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what hath con and what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, and in an amen there. As God has said, I will dwell in them, and shall walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be what? My people. How can you be God's person? And you are under torment, under you, under sickness, under affliction, under oppression. It cannot be, it must not be, it will not be in Jesus' name. But then, when there is a yoke that is tying somebody to the system of the world, the culture of the world, the dressing of the world, the music of the world, the style of the world doing business, such a person will come under you. But you are free, you are delivered in Jesus' name. Because God is in you, and that God in you will be, manifest, will be manifested through you in Jesus' name. But then understand, you have to make up your mind and say to yourself, this month of divine solution will be my month. Everything holding me down all these years, the Lord is destroying them in Jesus' name. So you have to make up your mind. Genesis chapter 27 verse 40. We see there are people that there is war in their life. This devouring war. Chapter 27, verse 40 of Genesis. And by thy sword shalt thou live, and shall serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, that thou shalt break his yoke from off thy neck. I need an amen. Everyone you have served all your life, that have been a master to you, no matter what that you may be, you will be liberated from them in Jesus' name. You know, there are people living in fear every day. Now, we say we are fasting and praying. There are people that almost every day of their life is fasting and prayer because they are under oppression, they are under torment, they are under affliction, they are under the torment of the enemy. They have no life. It's like they are sleeping, the one eye is closed, the other eye is open. Every now and then it's about witches and wizards. But I am glad somebody here today is liberated. Somebody here today is free. I have a good news for you. If God be for you, tell me. 
nobody can be against you. Nobody can be against your family. Nobody can be against your children. Nobody can be against your career. Nobody can be against your ministry in Jesus' name. There is this yoke of stagnation. You can't go forward. You can't move back. Whether go, I mean, moving back is bad enough. But you are just stagnated in one place. It's an attack of the enemy. And the Bible tells us in Leviticus chapter 26, verse 13, I am the Lord your God. I need an amen. Which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. Egypt stands for stagnation for 430 years. The people were bound. They couldn't move forward. They lost their identity. They lost their culture. They lost their language. They lost their family. They lost their heritage. They lost the promises of God. But pay attention here. Every promise of God for your life, you are recovering them in Jesus' name. All the years that locusts have eaten and the palm of one destroyed will be restored back unto you. I need a better one. It says, I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt. Egypt represents bondage. That ye should not be their bondmen. I have broken. I like that. I have broken. The bounds of your yoke in Jesus' name and make you go upright. Amen. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 4. Are you sick in your body? Are you having any kind of infirmity? Affliction, oppression? Isaiah chapter 9, verse 4. For thou hast broken the yoke of his body. And the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. In the day of Midian. What ended up with the Midianites? Let me tell you. They destroyed themselves. Your enemy, if they don't repent, they will destroy themselves. You will look around for them. You will not find them again. Let me remind you what happened to Pharaoh and Egypt. They destroyed themselves. Because they kept on pursuing. The people of the Lord. They kept on pursuing. The people of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Everyone pursuing you and will not back up from you. Will drown in the sea in Jesus name. But if they will repent. God will have mercy. I said God will have mercy. Because that's what we desire, that they will repent and then they will come and serve you. Let my enemy live, that they will see what God is doing in my life. Praise the Lord. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1. Galatians 5 1. Stand fast therefore. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage. The yoke of bondage. Now, uh, there is this particular woman that was very, very sick. And the sickness lasted for 18 years. But the day she met with Jesus, the yoke was broken. The band was loose. Her health was restored. Look up here. Look up here. Before I read to you, Luke chapter 13, verse 16. Luke 13, 16. But look up here. Last month, during the crusade, divine touch, a lot of people were touched. And even before our father in the Lord came up to speak, why the artist was still singing the morning, some people were getting healed. This is the preparatory ground for your miracle. And you don't want to get healed alone. 
Do you want to invite people, your friends, your colleagues, your co-worker, everybody you want to bring them together? If you can go to their house and sit down with them during the program and connect and watch with them. If as a church, the pastor can arrange for the members to come together to the church. As many of them that can come and then just get their eyes fixated on God. Expecting their miracle. I'm telling you, this month will be greater than last month. This past crusade, there are people here in the United States just listening through Zoom, through YouTube, and as the power of prayer was coming forth, they got their miracle. This month, you will not miss your miracle, you will not miss your blessing. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Art, are you there? Luke 13, 16. And art not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan had bound, lo, these 18 years, be loosed from, his, from this bond on the Sabbath day, on the Sabbath day, Shouldn't this daughter of Christ, shouldn't this man, a child of God, be loose from this bond, the yoke, the oppression, the chains, the tackles, and the fetters of the enemy that has been there all these many years? Shouldn't this child of God be free? You'll be free. You'll be delivered from the yoke of wrongdoing from the yoke of painful uh, servanthood. You'll be free from any and every infirmity, from torment and suffering, from the yoke of territorial spirit, from the yoke of familiar spirit. Now, when I say familiar, familiar, different from familiar. Familiar spirit it's a spirit that is connected with you, has been with you, has known you. That's familiar spirit. Knows your uprising and downsitting. Familiar spirit. Knows your way and manner of life and can come in, manipulate you, and cause you to do their will. Familiar spirit. Personal. But when I say familiar, I'm talking about yoke in your family. Family yoke. God will break them in the name of Jesus. Familial, seal on that familial, and sensual yoke. 